we're going to talk about uh, the use of UAVs and drones in precision agriculture. Um, precision agriculture is the use of data uh, in, in the field of agriculture. So traditionally you would have a farmer going out into the fields and of course farmers know their fields and they know exactly what's, uh, what's on their field and if a, if a certain crop uh, has a problem or like uh, there's a, a deficiency of nutrients or if there's a certain type of pest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the idea of precision agriculture is to use uh, different uh, technologies like sensors in the field or UAVs uh, that map the field, that monitor it, or like field cameras to uh, support the farmer in taking decisions. And what got you started in this field? Uh, I was always really interested in, uh, in drones and also model airplanes actually. Um, I think that that's where I'm coming from. That's more like the, the technical pers perspective of doing remote sensing with uh, small devices. And um, then during my master thesis, I, uh, I was involved into this nice project. Um, the idea was to, uh, to measure the water use of, um, of pasture and of meadows, of grasslands, mm -hmm. um, using thermal cameras on UAVs. And um, from there, I, I got more involved into, uh, into the precision agriculture field, especially um, for different uh, uh, large-scale plantations and then um, later also looking into uh, maize fields or uh, winter wheat, for example. All right. And how can you contribute to precision ag agriculture with the UAVs? Um, so UAVs have different uses. Uh, um, first of all, of course, gathering data. Um, so what we do um, with the drone is, um, like, I can just take it, uh, like with this UAV here, we can fly over a certain area, um, let's say a field. We take pictures and then later we assemble these pictures into a map. And this map um, can then be used to for, like there's many use cases for this. Um, I think a typical use, uh, use case at the moment is to, for example, use thermal cameras to detect, to detect uh, animals in the field before harvesting, mm -hmm. so that the animals are not killed by the harvester. Mm -hmm. um, there's many other uses, for example, insurance. If you have a, a cornfield, a maize field, and then there's wild boar in it, and uh, wild boar damages this field, then you kind of want to, uh, uh, to claim your, your, your insurance in this case. And, um, uh, UAVs are a great tool to just measure the, the area that has been damaged. Um, there's many other use cases um, um, that are more related to uh, multispectral data. Um, I, will, I will show this quickly. This is a multispectral camera. Multispectral just means there's several spectra in it. It means several cameras that have a filter. Mm -hmm. And um, this one here uses, for example, uh, like near-infrared and, uh, and red edge. These are uh, we cannot see them with a, with a bare eye, this, um, this kind of uh, this information, but um, we can collect it with, a, with this uh, multispectral camera. And with multispectral data, we can then calculate indices that tell us more about the, the crop's uh, um, uh, nutrition status. Is there uh, some fertilizer missing, for example? Um, or um, how much chlorophyll is there in, in the crops? And uh, from the chlorophyll content, we can derive other things, for example, plant health or um, uh, biomass overall, like uh, parameters like these. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to do? Uh, it depends, of course. Like if you're using a, a UAV like this, and um, I think so far, um, like in the past years, the past five years, you would have kind of find a way to attach these cameras here and um, also like plan your missions, these kind of things. This, uh, this involved a lot of knowledge basically, like um, how, um, how to create a, a, a path, how to create overlap between the images and everything. Mm -hmm. But in the last years we see that uh, software and also UAVs are um, evolving really fast. Mm -hmm. And um, at the moment I think we are, um, we are having uh, fully integrated cameras into the UAVs. So in the end it feels more like a, a game on a smartphone. So. Mm -hmm. um, you imagine you have your remote control, you can, um, you can just uh, delineate your field and the area that you want to map and then basically press a button and the drone, uh, the UAV takes off, uh, automatically maps the area, uh, also checks for perfect overlap between the pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. UAVs can uh, fly back basically uh, if there's lots of wind and the pictures are becoming shaky or so, or like a bit uh, blurry. And, um, so uh, I think the technology is rapidly evolving at the moment and uh, it's getting more easy and e uh, easier uh, to, 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 use, uh, to use UAV data. Yeah, because you started a long time ago to do this, right now you can enter a, a supermarket and buy a drone, but when you started that, that was not true. 
No, or, back then it was it was mostly it was actually much bigger drones. So yeah. um, because the payload that we had, the cameras were bigger. Um, uh, we were, yeah, we also had to add uh, additional sensors. We had to add better GPS systems and these kind of things. So uh, we used big drones, and uh, most of the technology we had back then was from uh, model airplanes. So mm -hmm. um, this was really like mostly uh, yeah handcrafted aircraft, and uh, we integrated the cameras ourselves um, for a thermal camera um, similar to this one actually that was I was flying during my uh, master thesis back then. We had to uh, we had to connect the thermal camera to a small Windows 7 computer, and had to run also Windows 7 computer on the same uh, drone that would basically lock everything to a USB stick. So things were really complicated back then, and it was not an environment for agriculture production. And nowadays, um, I can just show another another um, UAV here, another drone. Is you have a fully integrated camera. This all comes from one company basically. Um, the drone also has like cameras into all directions so that it doesn't crash into trees or uh, that it can land automatically. And um, so um, this, all, this all evolved like in the past years. Uh, do you think it's, we are or we're coming soon to a point where, let's say, if I'm a farmer, I can buy something off the shelf and already use for my own crops? I think we are already there. So um, what you can easily do is to map your field, uh, like with UAVs that come off the shelf. I mean, they are kind of expensive at the moment. I think you would have to spend at least five thousand euros into a uh, into a UAV that would either give you multispectral or thermal images. So uh, if you want both, um, like multispectral to, for example, optimize your fertilizer and uh, your fertilizer management and uh, thermal camera to optimize your irrigation or to sense water stress. Um, and they would already have to buy two of these drones, but then the, the whole mapping process is not so difficult anymore. I think this is, this is all, uh, uh, all, really, all really easy. You don't, you don't have to, uh, to put a lot of uh, energy into that. Um, what is actually still difficult is the whole workflow that follows. Uh, like now you have a map with a certain index, and now you have to decide, is this actually a pest? Is it some, the corn borer in my maize field? Or are we lacking nitrogen in that, in that section? Or is it water stressed? And for that reason, the plant health is not optimal, or these kind of things. Um, you could, of course, just go to your field and check that. <laughs> mm. um, uh, this is one option. However, if you have a really big farm or if it's a bigger plantation, then it would make sense to also improve your workflow here. So what is actually the actually challenging thing is to work with the data in the end and uh, to, um, yeah, to, to, have a, to have a way to, to uh, automatically apply this to your field. So what you could do, for example, is um, you could uh, have an automatic uh, pesticide application system on your tractor. So you're passing through the field and uh, only uh, where in your UAV data you detected uh, um, certain pests or so, you could spray the pesticide there. Mm -hmm. So that saves you money for, and it also saves the environment because then you have less uh, uh, less pesticides in the environment and you only apply it on the crops that actually need it. Um, the next thing is, for example, irrigation. Like usually if you have a big field, then not all the crops will suffer from water stress equally. And if you have limited water, you want to, uh, you want to, um, uh, you want to, uh, Put your water into the or like uh, into the areas of the field that need it most, and like that you can first create a map with the crop stress with the drone. Then you can decide where to irrigate exactly, and then you can uh, put an automated irrigation system uh, in play into place to irrigate in the in the areas that need it most. Oh, that would be awesome to to see. <laughs> and um, what is the future? What what do you see in the future? Um, yeah, I think I think uh, UAVs are going to be more and more automated. So um, there will be like this automated uh, automated operation. Um, what we already see is that we can go out with this, as I already said, like with this smartphone-like uh, remote control and just uh, map a certain area. Um, I think what's what's probably going to come in the future is that uh, different sensors are going to be integrated into the UAV. Uh, at the moment, we have multispectral cameras. With this, you can already do a lot, but. Uh, Probably even hyperspectral cameras are going to become available for, for regular people and outside of science that would be extremely interesting, also for phenotyping. You can uh, grow different crops on the same field at the same time and um, also see uh, the different status of the different crops. Um, I think some, uh, uh, another thing that's going to come is uh, that uh, drones can also be used as field tools. So now that you know that you have certain pests in your field, 
Um, you can, um, for example, uh, distribute other uh, animals. Uh, there's a wasp, for example, that uh, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, f uh, like helps a lot against the corn borer. So you could distribute eggs of these wasps uh, in the field with the drone. Um, this is one thing. The other thing is, for example, uh, pollination. Um, so there's a problem with the, with the bees. Um, uh, bees are more and more uh, becoming extinct or uh, under pressure um, by other things like um, that, uh, like pesticides, for example. And um, so, what you could do is uh, you could pollinate the fields using UAVs, and you could also precisely pollinate certain trees. Uh, and so, um, you're not so much uh, you're not so much dependent anymore on natural pollinators. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much for this interview. Thanks a lot. Do you want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our geo heroes posts a new video.